Chapter 25. The first week had passed quickly, and Rick actually started to feel optimistic. By the time the second week passed, he figured that when he went stateside, he would mobilize the whole rehab clinic, or if they weren't as helpful as the staff here, he would do it all himself. On the other hand, mixed with his optimism, optimism was doubt. Could a dog, even a great dog like Cracker, survive this long out there in the jungle? A few days before Rick was to be shipped back for stateside rehab, his mouth dropped open as U-Haul, U-Haul, walked up to his bed carrying a manila file. He patted Rick's good leg, just like a friend might. Was the universe going completely insane? You all hadn't bothered to stop by even once since Rick had been injured. I've got good news, the sergeant said. Rick hesitated. In Nam, news usually meant bad news. You found Cracker, Rick said. The only question was, dead or alive? All we know is she's been spotted. Somebody found this near our base. He handed Rick the file. Rick opened it to find a black and white picture of a bedraggled cracker lying in a forest, her tongue hanging out of her mouth, but a dull spark of life still in her eyes. He cried out, cracker. There are some Vietnamese photographers who travel alone taking pictures of the war for Charlie to use as propaganda. They hang the photos on the trees sometimes. I tell you, it's pretty dang bizarre to be walking through the forest and see a bunch of pictures hanging from the trees. A guy from the 199th Light Infantry found this. Cracker looks strange, limp, but definitely alive. I gotta get out of here and save her, cried Rick. It was possible she was alive. He searched the picture for more information, but didn't find anything. Then he searched his intuition and found nothing, or rather he found something. He thought she was dead. Rick pushed himself all the way up. Sergeant, they went to, They want to send me home. Is there any way I can stay to search for Cracker? He started to say Cracker's body, but he stopped himself. U-Haul shook his head. He seemed defeated. I'm afraid not. The 67th has stood down. Stood down? That meant they'd been deactivated. Our side of the war is winding down. You know that. But Sergeant, did you know the Vietnamese call this the American War? Sarge, I gotta find her. Rick. Rick fell silent. U-Haul had never called him Rick before. He braced himself for more bad news as U-Haul stared at Cracker's picture. You gotta move on. Rick knew the Sarge was probably right, but he said, no, no, there's, there's no other dog like her. If any dog can make it, it would be her. And as he said it, he started to believe again. The Sarge's jaws, jowls seemed to be sagging. Then he seemed furious. Lansky, just thank your lucky stars. You're in one piece. 2020's lost his arm. Oh, geez. Geez, I'm sorry. And he was really sorry, yet he still couldn't stop. He said, but Sarge, about Cracker, I know her. She knows me. If she's alive, we could find each other out there. U-Haul shook his head. You're going mental, Lansky. Good luck in the world. And he walked off. Rick lay back again and held up the picture of Cracker. It was her, all right, but she looked like a mess. He wondered how long Cracker would survive out there, especially now that the platoon had stood down. She wouldn't know where to go.